as the Second World War in Europe came to an end, there was a great deal of uncertainty across the continent. There was a huge amount of people who had been displaced, and many people had been killed inside of concentration camps. It was the most devastating conflict in world history, with the biggest military and civilian costs. Towns and cities had been bombed into oblivion, and for many people things would never be the same again. Hitler had died inside of his Führer bunker days before, and much of his government was scrambling to hide out and save their own skin, but others would go the same way as an Nazi dictator. There was one American soldier though who would go down in history as the last member of the American army to be killed in combat, and it's believed he was killed ten minutes after all the soldiers in Europe had been told they were to obey a ceasefire. Join us today as we look at the last American soldier killed during World War II, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Charlie Havlat would be the man who would go down in history books as the last American soldier killed in combat in Europe during the Second World War. He was born on the 4th of November 1910 in Saline County, Nebraska, and his parents had immigrated from the Czech Republic. They arrived in America in 1903, seven years before Charlie was born, and they then married a year before, and they then settled down on a farm. Charlie was the oldest of six children, and he had three brothers. He worked on his family's farm, and then he started a trucking company with his brother, and the pair would haul grain, rocks and other items between different towns in eastern Nebraska. However, by 1940, Charlie Havlat was living in Dorchester, Nebraska, and two years later he was drafted into the American Army. His brothers would eventually serve overseas too, and Havlat trained as part of the reconnaissance company of the 803rd Tank Destroyer Battalion, based at Fort Lewis in Washington. His brother would serve in the same battalion, but Charlie trained for a while, until he was moved to Camp Hood in Texas. The battalion was shipped around America a lot, but they were then alerted for their overseas deployment, and they left for Scotland, and they got there on the 29th of June, 1943. They remained in Britain for around a year, before on the 13th of June, 1944, a week after the D-Day landings, the 803rd Tank Destroyer Battalion arrived in France, coming into Normandy via Omaha Beach. His group would serve in the Normandy Bacage, and they would be involved in clearing the hedgerows of German tanks and armament. They were equipped with M10 tank destroyers, which were considered capable of knocking out most of what the Germans had. But following the breakout from Normandy, the battalion were involved in a huge movement across France to Belgium and the Netherlands. They continued to fight on, and in November 1944, they were involved in the battles at Aiken and also the Battle of the Hurken Forest. Further action was seen at the Battle of the Bulge, and after the Allies broke the German lines in the Ardennes, the battalion would capture the major city of Trier in Germany, and then they crossed the Rhine. The battalion continued to push back the German forces, round up prisoners of war, and they then moved towards Austria and Czechoslovakia. By the time the war was in its final days, Charlie Havlat and his other soldiers were very battle-hardened, and they had fought through the toughest of battles in Europe. But on the 7th of May 1945, at General Dwight Eisenhower's headquarters in Reims, Alfred Jodl, the Chief of Staff of the German Army, signed the Instrument of Surrender. The unconditional surrender of the German Third Reich was signed early in the morning of the 7th of May 1945, and it was Jodl who was there to sign three other surrender documents at the same time, concealing the war for the Germans against the British, French and the Russians. Also present at this meeting were representatives of the four Allied powers and three German officers who had been delegated to be present by Hitler's successor, Admiral and Grand President Karl Dönitz. Also present was Jodl's aide and Hans George von Friedeborg, another one of the main negotiators. Following the signing of the surrender in Reims, there was concern expressed that the fighting was continuing in the east between the Germans and the Soviet Union. They were concerned that despite the surrender of the German forces coming into effect, that lives were still being lost, as there would not be an announcement regarding a ceasefire yet. It was hard to communicate this to everyone across the channels to take place immediately. A day later, the documents signed in Berlin would be acceptable for the Soviets that the war was over, but for some German soldiers they wanted to fight on till their deaths for the Third Reich. Charlie Havlat was, on the morning of the 7th of May 1945, inside of Czechoslovakia, 
who was on a road 12 kilometres into the country, would not have known initially that the war had in fact come to a conclusion in Europe, with the Germans surrendering and ceasefiring to the Allies. Whilst Havlat and his men were on this road, his reconnaissance platoon were hit with a hail of enemy machine gun fire and small arms fire from an ambush. The German soldiers who were firing upon them had hidden themselves and ambushed the Germans at the side of the road. The gunfire continued, but moments after it began, Charlie Havlat was hit by a bullet in the head, which killed him immediately. His fellow soldiers returned fire until the radio operator received word that around nine minutes before the ambush had begun, that a ceasefire had been agreed between the Allied nations and the Germans, and that this had come into effect. This meant that Havlat was the last American man in Europe, killed during the Second World War, and he was a man who minutes before could have lived. The German officer who led the ambush was taken prisoner, and was taken into custody, and when he was tired of the ceasefire, he claimed he knew nothing about this, and he knew nothing about the end of hostilities, when he led the attack, and he apologised for what happened. What is more tragic is the fact that Havlat was killed in his parents' native land, and at the time he was fighting to try and liberate it from fascism and Nazi occupation. Havlat had been hit by a bullet whilst he was trying to take cover behind a jeep, and instantly he was killed by the attack. Charlie Havlat's two brothers were serving in Europe when they found out about his death, and they would travel to pay their respects to their older brother, who had been buried in a temporary gravesite. He was later interred at the Lorraine American Cemetery in Memorial, near Saint-Avold, in France, but his family would not be told he was the last American soldier to die in Europe during the Second World War until 1995, 50 years after the death of him and the end of the war. Charlie Havlat was a man who gave his life fighting for his country, and he died needlessly as a ceasefire had been brought into effect minutes before. The German soldiers that his group encountered were from the 11th Panzer Division, and the death of Havlat was in a sense a war crime, as he was killed at the end of the hostilities. The war of course for the Americans and Allies would continue in the Pacific, but Havlat was the last American to be killed in Europe during the Second World War. He'd seen a large amount of action in his relatively short time in conflict, but the 34-year-old man from Nebraska is remembered tragically in history for his unfortunate death in his parents' homeland. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.